Beauty. Is that yeah. to see yourself? That's great. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, Sarah asked me to talk to you all about. I'm going to admit Amelia. <laughs> Asked me to talk to you all about um, about wireframing, but I actually kind of prefer to call it a visual GED uh, because wireframing is just like a piece. It's probably the like most common piece of or of uh, the types of GEDs that I make. Um, but yeah, the, I, I there's a lot of components, and I'm going to go over what are the types of components that um are involved so first of all um to make a visual gdd i, I find it it's it, it serves a lot of purposes rather than like sort of a traditional text-based gdd that um so you can use it to pitch to people outside you can use it to pitch to your own team you can use it during development to uh sort of just keep the vision of the game and then you can also use it at, for as a reference for developers to see oh how is this supposed to work again um and a lot of what i uh am most inspired by in terms of gdd process is from this guy stone lebrandy who um yeah did a lot of cool uh games he's at riot now which is fine, I guess. <laughs> but he, but when I when I first um, was exposed to his work, he was at Maxis working on the new SimCity, and it was just like the most impressive um, game work of game design I'd ever seen. Um, like uh, that, the launch of that game was sort of didn't go well for reasons outside of the design itself, but it was. Um, a really, really impressive work, and I investigated the stuff that he brought up, and um, and it started from this presentation that's linked in the slides that are in the event that we're currently at. In the digital version of this event, uh, you can click on uh, these slides, and then you can click on this link, and it'll take you to a video of Stone Brandy talking about one-page game designs. But fundamentally, the idea was he was working on Diablo three. And um, for most game development projects, you make like a wiki um, for like a, a really big project, especially you either do like a confluence or like a master, like some kind of wiki software. But the problem is that um, nobody reads it. <laughs> so you like make it and maybe they read it once and forget about it and then it changes and they don't go back and read it again. So what it decided to do instead was to make like a poster of the whole game design in a visual format. Um, so this has got um, all the units where you can find them, like what types of places you can find them in. This isn't necessarily like a level that's in Diablo 3. It's just got all the types of places you would find in the level um, and like, you know, how, how they might have some verticality um, and then each of the units has a little bit of information and you can see that there's no sort of numeric information. There's like little icons of like plus things and then there's like, you know, damage high and things like that. Um, it's very qualitative. Um, but the idea was like, here's everything about Diablo 3, um, like on this high level, let's just put it up as a poster. And if somebody is like, oh, is this guy supposed to be fast or slow? I can't remember. And you just go to the wall and, or look over whatever. Um, so I, I thought this was super cool. And they had like super big format printers at, at Blizzard. So I've attempted to do some uh, full GDDs in all visual format. Uh, I mostly don't succeed because for one thing, it takes a really long time to represent everything in a game visually. And also um, for certain types of games, I find it hard to present context visually, especially for learning games, because you want to know things like, you know, who are the kids and why are they doing this? And uh, <laughs> uh, so here's a couple that I worked on. This is like a, 
an IF platform that I designed and like this is all there is to it. Um, and then this is a game where you run a trucking empire. <laughs> it's like a desktop simulator type game um, that I did for like a design test. Um, yeah, so what are all the pieces of a visual GDD? Um, so you can have all of these types of things. Uh, and text. Um, so let's start with diagrams and mechanics. So it's a pretty simple concept. You want to represent a mechanic in some way, um, spatialize it, um, represent relationships between items. So here's one again from Stone the Brandy. This is how combat works in Diablo 3. There's like four essential types of combat and each of those is split up into certain things. So like, you know, you can, you can have a, a hit scan type weapon or you can have a projectile and you can have a, a projectile that's affected by gravity. So like just representing these things visually, uh, I think uh, is, is so much easier to grasp than saying, you know, hit scan weapons, trace array, and <laughs> whatever, all of that stuff. Um, especially when it gets to more complicated things like a wave, which like you want to say, oh, it can can span a, a any arc along this thing and it's going to propagate outward. It's better just to have a picture. Um, so here's a diagram of a mechanic that I made for um, an Osmo game that you can buy right now called Words Explorers and <laughs> the Tunnel of Treasures. Um, yeah, so there's people standing on these blocks. In real life, you use tiles to spell the word that they're standing on, and then those blocks become intangible and you fall through them. Um, yeah, another thing you can put in GDDs to make them more visual, storyboards. So here's a really nice example storyboard from actual film production. And you'll notice they have like um, long shot, close up, me uh, medium shot um, things. But those, those are kind of evident. It's a little redundant. Um, and it doesn't. It, it, Storyboards don't have to look this good. Some of the best like directors have really crappy stick figure storyboards that um, get the job done. Um, so don't feel pressure to be a great illustrator. Here's another one from Soma Brandy. It's a some kind of a creature game. I don't think this game ever released. This is like before Spore came out. It was at, X at Maxis, and there's uh, yeah some creatures and some interactions. And he's added some annotation in terms of like when these, when these sequences would happen. Like this one, this one frame can just happen anytime. Here are some storyboards that I've done for other designs. Um, and you notice that I, I put like a little mechanic diagram interposed. So it's, a, it's not, not a pure storyboard. And here's like just showing, you know, we're using this little crane to pick up the number one and bring it over and deposit it here where this thing also says one. And then we've done that little interaction. Um, so let's do that first storyboarding exercise. Do you want to do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for printing these up. <laughs> Any more of them or are we good? I think we're good. Like exactly good. That's yeah, exactly good. good. This is where online to see we have to meet access to them. Or yes, we can send this or yeah. They're doing some storyboarding. Please have patience. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Um, it's, it should say it's the, just the first exercise, everything, yeah. And there's some like storyboard paper there with some frames and some description. Uh, 
you don't need to make it uh, elaborate. Yeah, this is these are it, so all these exercises are like some of the exercises that I'm working on for a separate like book of game design <coughs> exercises that you can do. What is the exercise? It's second third page. Take the next take next few pages to try to the same time we it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it starts at your task. Up higher on page. Thank you. Oh, and yeah, that whole page. Hmm. We'll the one that might be in the middle. Okay. So yeah, the, the time before that also presents some like storyboard techniques, like if you want to show camera moves, it shows you how to do that. But if you're doing flat cuts, then it's very, very self-explanatory, just frame, 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 description. I think I'll have the same time drawing things that we've done that prepared us for this moment. And you have to do all this in nine seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. I would err on the side of stick figures for sure. Because <laughs> I'm going to stop you in five minutes. Yeah, so do we have five? Five more minutes, okay. yeah. It's like if you have 30 seconds, like Dave makes you stressed out. <laughs> We'll see everybody do it in Wes Anderson style. So. <laughs> I'll assign directors. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pixar film that, uh, documentary, but watching like a professional storyboarder, their speed was just, it was really magical. Like just how quickly the images would hit the page. Mm -hmm. Just because it makes sense of the movie a thousand times. Throw them all away after a meeting, after a meeting, you're all like, yeah. Yeah. Something. seeing people take comic book inspiration. So that's cool. <laughs> I took inspiration from the uh, what's the Breaking Bad. They do a lot of the camera inside of some as like mm -hmm. a huge thing now to see like inside of the footage. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that too, yeah. His name, the showrunner for Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. Right. I don't remember. Was it the Ben Gilligan? Gilligan. Gilligan. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah. That's where they're going to date this recording. <laughs> He'll still have been the director of Breaking Bad, or the showrunner. I'm going to make this hyper 2024. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tank green. <laughs> Y'all ever heard of the term heat? <laughs> Like yes. Yeah, that's, eh, I mean, that dates it only to the last like 12 years. On TikTok. Okay, well, <laughs> TikTok immediately limits it to like three years. One more minute. Or less. I feel like they gave you enough frames to do this. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move on and can keep scribbling if you're intent on it. <laughs> yeah. So next, flowcharts. Everybody's favorite. Surprisingly recent invention, flowcharts. In the uh, return of the 20th century. Um, So you all know what they are, what they do. You just it's like a state transition diagram where you don't know where your thing is. You gotta like your your gaze is basically the state. Um, and yeah, here's a Stone LeBrandy example, but uh, it's kind of a hybrid diagram slash flowchart. That's little breakout diagrams of how things work. Um, but then there's also like, um, whoa. I mean, the most common use case I found for uh, flow charts is basically just for anything that has multiple scenes or, um, or AI states, you just wanna show how those things connect to one another. Um, so here's a simple game. So the title screen, the setting screen, a levels menu, and the, the gameplay screen, and how they all connect to one another. Um, so there's another exercise <laughs> where you're going to use a flow chart, but for narrative purposes. So I put an example there where you're just representing a little interactive story as a flow chart. And um, yeah, just to get you used to the ovals, diamonds, rectangles. We'll do another five. Curious. I hope this is fun work. I'm seeing some faces that are like, you're making me do stuff during your presentation. <laughs> I really like doing it. <laughs> It is always funny when we're like we're at an education conference or we're at a spot where we're like thinking about good communication, and then you go into a presentation. The person's like, "Okay, we're gonna do some activities." I'm like, "Half of it just leaves." You're like, "That's not what I said." I, I know we're supposed to be talking about good communication, but I need some time to check my email. Yeah. 
my uh, my pet peeve at conferences is when the speaker says like, "How we all doing today?" <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> you heard us. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see some enthusiasm out there. Once you're in church, and then you're doing it to get everybody yeah, moving. Form of wake up. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? How are can, I, can you say <laughs> amen? Amen. And then you can get that rhythm. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, that can work. <laughs> Imagine if that was how the, the, the Martin Luther King's dream speech started. How's everybody doing out there? Oh I can't hear you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this I love you, Memphis. <laughs> I think the needy start would be. I'm going to start over here. <laughs> like, how are you doing? <laughs> Score, score, and play. I can't hear you guys out there. <laughs> How many is four for score and seven? Anybody? Guy in the front? <laughs> Our nation, that's right. Our nation. It is 87. Good job. Here's some candy. Oh, <laughs> no. Legacy of Abe Lincoln. <laughs> MLK is still doing fine. MLK is still doing fine. <laughs> My fellow Americans, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> That's not what your country can do for you. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I can't hear you. Okay, I'm gonna move on. This is, it, it, it is now left as an exercise to the reader <laughs> for later. Enjoy your, your story though. I know I will, if you share it with me later. <laughs> I'm working with Liv Tyler's character. Oh, yeah. You're going to show this to Nora, I hope. Oh, oh I'm going to show it to the world. <laughs> nice. Along with the goblin for girlfriend. Yes. Yeah, she uses the proof that there's never enough documentation when handing off the technology to handle the computer screen. And it was helpful to the thought experiment. So. <laughs> so, this is a, an interposition where I wanted to just say if you have flow chart and you cross it with a storyboard what you get is a wireframe um and yeah basically the storyboard assumes some linearity but you don't get linearity in the stuff that we make so you have to explain how the storyboards flow into each other um and i like to just make arrows that are go from buttons to the places that the buttons will lead you to go um, and try and describe those transitions if possible. And I, um, I'll reiterate this later, but I like to use like special meta color and a meta font that I choose at the beginning of a project. So most of the time I actually use magenta as my meta color. So because it's so infrequent that, uh, that Magenta is used in the actual design, and um, and I try and use a uh, handwriting font uh, <laughs> for my meta font. Uh, sometimes I don't have time for that, or I haven't developed that convention yet when I when I made this. Um, but uh, yeah, handwriting font. You almost never use a handwriting font in the actual thing that you're <laughs> making. Um, so it just makes sure that like everyone knows this is a comment. This isn't something that's included in the app. Even for lay people, they'll be able to recognize that quickly. So <laughs> there's a wireframing exercise now. Um, and this is super simple. So I made, made an example wireframe of this little um, pet 
app. Um, and then uh, I gave you some space to do some wireframes for like a music game app. And I'm, you don't have to do too much in terms of the gameplay, but I want to see like how the screens flow into one another, how you get between them. Um, I've actually like <laughs> in past projects, like been in such a rush that I've made screens that are completely orphaned like there's no way to get to them or out of them uh, so it, it seems stupid but it's possible to do you end up here got it. <laughs> yeah exactly i think the station still has some screens like that. <laughs> we should talk about the station at some point mm. next week or wait a minute not next week it's for mobile, so remember that thumbs are like cover some of the screen. I'm so sorry, Amelia and Mary. We will get you these <laughs> exercises. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. We're good, I enjoy listening. I'm using these gaps to do a little wireframe for a personal project. I had some music to play during these. I can run for you. <laughs> All of the songs I'm thinking to sing are unworkable <laughs> for this purpose. The first one that came to mind was. Amadeus from The Simpsons. <laughs> and then the, the next one was Yellow Submarine. <laughs> I was just thinking about like the Jeopardy mating sound. Oh, yeah. I wonder when that became so imbued with stress. Because <laughs> it's a pretty relaxed little video <laughs> on its own merits. Just speed up towards the end. Like, do, 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 do. It's my fault. And you can always add the O'Reilly Auto Parts yowl at the end.
I applaud your all, all of your willingness to be creative <laughs> on short notice. <laughs> That's what most of my time branding my game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the logo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making mine exclusively trumpet. <laughs> oh, I love it. Three valves is trumpet, actually huh? pretty good. Just trumpet. I don't know. I, I don't know how to play trumpet. The trumpet can't slide the three notes. Can you can do it with your embouchure. Like with your mouth, yeah. Uh, yeah I was like, just thinking yeah. I was imagining that being like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of it's advanced. Kind of right with the trumpet. Are you gonna be graded? <laughs> <laughs> You're all gonna get A's, I promise. Oh, no, I'm gonna be late on my assignment. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna move on. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one more assignment left, and it's for later. Okay. Let's turn off your phone before class. So yeah, the, the last like visual element for G, the visual GDBs that I wanted to point out was maps. And maps, I just mean putting some concept in space in a logical way. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like a literal top-down view of some earth. Um, although that is probably the most common kind. Can, can anyone identify, whoever identifies one of these maps first gets this granny candy. What work of fiction oh is God. one of these maps, right? Either one I will accept. Okay. Say what? Sorry. No. Yes. Travis. Yeah. And so the right well hand looks like it's Silent Hill. Yeah. That's from the wall. And this is from the Sabriel book oh, series. Okay. I don't know. It's really good. Garth Nix. Look it up. <laughs> and then, as always, here's some uh, some LeBrandy examples. So he's got some literal maps. Um, with some annotations to them, and also like a map of personality model that they use for their like creature game. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is from the journalism game. I would count this as a map. <laughs> it's like how the things work in time and also um, how they relate to each other. And then this is from penguins. Which actually had a map. Which actually had a map. Yeah. <laughs> it changed from this, but yeah, that's what GDDs are for. Can you go back and say a little more about um, framing that one on the left as a, as a map based on the definition? Yeah, maybe it is a little bit of a stretch because it, it ends up that these things are sort of linear. Um, but just sort of grouping them in space to me felt like got it we're mapping them together yep. as like belong to a region of the game so yeah last exercise and you're gonna reinvent soccer screw them <laughs> I already called it soccer, so they're already pissed yeah, off. That's, <laughs> a, that's a good point. <laughs> My dog loves playing soccer. Can I add a dog to soccer? Absolutely. <laughs> the main what goal, sport wouldn't be improved with a dog? The main goal is to not kill her, but to let her somehow interact with the ball. Which she, is the biggest she is. While well, I was jumping right in front of her, you kicked it, so you have to kick it. Lightly enough that if it happens, but it still can get to her. It's it really like, is about the cutest thing. I want to play. I want to play. Oh, please don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes at it. The ball swirls over her and she's just like, yes. and stuff. She's just like, can we get it? <laughs> she will bark at the soccer ball until we don't kick it around. She's like, let's play this. It's game. Rocket League for that puppy. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> giant. Oh, the same size. Yeah, it's exactly. The scale, yeah. <laughs> Is 
this shouldn't take long. I hope if you come up with something, it should be quick to sketch an idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Inside of a dodecahedron. <laughs> That's right. Is this question? Is this going to be playable by humans? <laughs> oh my god! So amazing. I, I guess yes. It it should be playable by humans under some circumstances. <laughs> okay. It doesn't have to be a circumstance I'm, possible now. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that yeah, like this dodecahedron's got to be spinning in space to keep the people on the outsides. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the soccer draw. <laughs> Take home the Galactic Cup if you survive. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. And then text. Sad sad text that no one reads and yet it <laughs> it's what makes sense of all the images basically I'm just gonna be silent at this point what? just so you can soak in how boring it is to read Or to create hallucinations in your head. That last sentence is actually kind of profound, I would say. I'm amazed regularly with how you can have a group of people talking around a conference table, and then you hand someone a whiteboard marker. And then you realize, like, no, we have been inhabiting different universes for an hour. Right now. <laughs> it's like a, a running joke with my wife and I that, yeah. like, when I describe something three dimensional, she never pictures the same thing. Um, and partially, it, partially, it's because I like went to engineering school and we were we had to learn all these words like you know, coplanar and concentric and <laughs> all of Meaningful. those old yeah and things that yeah describe how things relate to each other in 3d um but yeah it, it, there have been many arguments <laughs> like how do you think that irrigation machine works <laughs> it's like and we just agree at the top of our lung <laughs> but the thing that text i think is is uh, most useful for is lists um Games have lots of lists. There's lots of items that are in a similar class, and then they have attributes to them that you need to list. Um, and uh, the first GDDs that I ever encountered were basically big nested lists. Um, and like, I don't know, when I started as a professional game designer in 2010, I like Googled like, game design document sample. And it was really just like a paragraph and then just lists. <laughs> um, and that's that's part of the reason that I found this like visual GED approach so cool. <laughs> and once I saw it, I'm like, I'm never going back to just lists. Just lists. But if you're uh, strapped for time, that's one <laughs> reason to have lists. And then there's things that are like numerical then you might as well put in text because there's you know there's no benefit to like having 15 pips if you know that something's going to be health 15 or whatever um, but you know if you're doing it more qualitatively sure absolutely make a picture out of it make like three hearts for high health and two for medium and one for low and that's that's much better for digesting the information quickly, but it's not the actual information. It's just like a proxy or, or a qualitative summary. So yeah, tools to make these. You only need two. It's great. 
you need vector drawing so that you can resize things and look at details. Sometimes you want to like make things that are nested inside things. You want to be able to zoom in as much as you want to. That's why I think Photoshop is a bad choice, um, but Illustrator is a great choice. Um, but also Figma is uh, even better these days, I would say, because you can all edit it together. Um, Miro, maybe. <laughs> we do have Illustrator and Figma. Like anybody that works with us has access to those. So if, you, if you're wanting to do this, um, all the Adobe projects, and then we have stuff through Eric's account on Figma, but we probably all have access to that in some way. Right on. What's your beef with uh, Miro? And not Miro like as a tool, it feels but Miro as a concept. Is it, or no, is it it, actually as a It is just as a tool. I, the, I, th I think it's great for like whiteboarding. And then when you want to make something that looks polished, it takes a lot more effort than. Oh, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So to do the vector, the vector part particularly, it's not. Like, right. Yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, I don't know what it'll be, but I'm picking up, but I know with the Illustrator, if you've been using it for a little bit of time, you can just do it really fast. It is fast. Yeah. Cool. So here's some like random tips <laughs> for making visual GDs. Uh, yeah, you don't want one that's like a, a Bible in length. Um, so if you have some sub parts that you can describe in separate visual GDDs, just break them out and point to them, link them, or, you know, uh, the, one of the, I don't know, I had a lead designer one time who, um, made like, um, uh, it almost like a Euro game manual for, a, a thing that we had not even prototyped yet. Um, and that's that's why I wanted to say don't specify prematurely. Um, so like when you're starting out, you want to be at the level of like three hearts, two hearts, one heart. You don't want to say this one has like 45 out of 108 um, because people will look at that and laugh. <laughs> right? Like, okay, this is what you want, but like you don't know that this is right. And we all know that you don't know. So it undermines the like validity of the whole document, I would say. Um, I think I was teaching a game design class years ago, and it was so funny where like the game concept was in no way represented in the GDD, but the exact function and damage done by all the weapons was like intricately spelled out. Uh -huh. And you're just like, what happened? You're like, where's the game? Right? Like, yeah, it just totally lost the. That's a great the segue to overview. Start yeah. your GDD with an elevator pitch. Tell us, tell us who's it for, what it's about, and what devices are the targets. Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's maybe the one you did for Zabala was like a little bit more than that, mm -hmm. you think, but it still isn't like ready for a developer to pick it up and run with it, right? Like, yeah, a lot of messy and pieces to do that for sure. But that I think is like a really good point is that. This is like on a spectrum of being ready. And a lot of times I feel like working with you, I noticed that you would start a whole new GDD for like a small part that needed a lot of specificity. So we didn't end up with these monster documents. So once the thing had been built, sometimes we would start a new one, which mm -hmm. I found really helpful. Yeah. I the the one thing that I often am not good about is making sure that those are linked back to the original things and we have like the history of, uh, of GDD. Sometimes I like edit them in place, uh, unfortunately. Um, Once we build a prototype, sometimes we end up just kind of like losing the original GDD and just moving on to some yeah. new document. But which I, I mean, it never was a problem. That can be good, but then there's also sometimes especially when when there's like turnover of staff sorry about that uh <laughs> the, the, you end up like relitigating the same problems and if you have the old document it can be like Why? we had yeah. this in the original document we prototyped it it didn't work yeah so don't suggest that again yeah um yeah the apple usability guidelines are linked in this slideshow you should definitely read them eric i know is like lives by them 
um, but they're helpful for everyone just to know like if you're going to make a wireframe like how big should the buttons be and um, like <laughs> how long should you need to press them and like just basic nitty gritty stuff um, that's super helpful. Um, yeah, and I think it's useful to indicate the certainty you have in a given design decision. So like, again, with the like Bible GDD um, that I got from my, my uh, lead that I hated, uh, <laughs> the, everything was like, this seems written in stone. There was no like indication of any doubt in this document that with like over specified everything. Um, and so it was like, which parts of these are fungible, which parts need, do we need to revisit, like, feel free to call that out for yourself, even it, either in the document or like, make it a comment, like the first comment for this is like, this is the number that I thought of, but we're gonna revisit this or like, um, like, I'm not sure if this should be first person or third person, whatever, like, if you're not sure about something, just put it in, in there and everyone, and no one's going to respect you less for not knowing, like in the beginning of a uh, design phase that like, you know, there's, there's some things you just can't know until you have it in your hands. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've talked about this already. Yeah, and don't underspecify. Um, that's like, uh, you know, that's basically the job. That's like the most that's that's why there's a separate job called game designer is because uh, uh, you need to specify everything and you need to do it in such a way that like you can give a design document to someone and they won't need to ask you any further questions, <laughs> ideally. Now, like yeah. the real world doesn't happen like that. Usually there are some places where you're like, oh, I forgot to say that this should be such and such and you need to walk people through but like in an ideal world you give this to someone and they're like oh i know what that game is and i know how to build it um yeah yeah this was something that i really appreciate working with you and i feel like we can give it to prototypers to build and sometimes we get to a point where we can't really keep going on the dvd until we've kind of gotten a sense of if it's fun like it's ready for prototype um mm -hmm. And ready for the next thing. I think sometimes we were at a point where we were making too much like high fidelity stuff and not doing this process. So this has been really helpful for us because when we first started, we were working with Phil who would just make it out of his head. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't doing the DVD process. So since he's left um, for the last two years, we've been like, I mean, we would have a GDD, but it was more like that initial pitch. And then we wouldn't do this whole process. So. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that like more people who are interested can start learning how to build these. Yeah. I think this is this is pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah, I linked some some GDDs. Uh, yeah, they're not free to David, but to everyone else, they're free. <laughs> 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 they cost they cost him a one. bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> Like everything we do, David gets to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So thanks so much, everyone. It's been an honor working with you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I will encourage anybody who is interested in doing um, wireframing or visual GDDs, as I will now call them, to set up an email with Bobby next week if yeah, you have so, uh, questions or want to just do some more yeah. exercises with him. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'd love to see developers getting documents that they can make. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff going into pre-production here in the next like six months or so. So there's there are opportunities. I would be bad at this job. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I feel like the detail is amazing, but like, I, I mean, I, maybe if I had to, like, in order to stay alive, but. <laughs> 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 you, you in the front of the plane, make a visual GDD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an idea for a fighting game. I, it's going to be awesome. I know where my 
my things are. It's coming up with the Tyler, I guess. <laughs> asking Lindsay to like do all the details. <laughs> Anyone can do it. It just takes time. That's awesome. Thank you. Yay. Um, I'm so gonna... today we're all gonna hang out Should if I... anyone wants to. Yeah, you can End say this... goodbye to them. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Farewell.